girls. Welcome to peek over my shoulder as I need vision all over near feud. The previous episode was a short one because I was uh, recovering some some sequences which I had lost when I thought I was recording and I wasn't. But now we're in uh, proper new territory again and uh, and that means all the glorious new vision applies. And we have Mr. What's his face and uh, Princess What's her name here? Who have kidnapped? I mean, <coughs> saved us. Probably we we are facing a bright future as uh, there are minions in some unforeseeable scheme. I have developed some uh, personal conspiracy theories, etc., etc. Now let's start talking. So, uh, what do you think of our new mysterious benefactress? Oh, dog! She the flies banging this Ben Affleck just as ever spy with my own motherfucking megapixels, dog. What you think? <laughs> my lead? I might go inner species to get with this shorty. <laughs> Hound dog, she is not just out of your league, she is out of your planet. She is in a galaxy far, far away, my Mac Daddy friend. Well, we gotta take this job. Just to keep <laughs> options open. You know what I'm saying, nigga? I don't know what you're saying, nigga, but we do gotta take this job. Straight up. <laughs> so, uh... Oh, okay, oh. we have already covered yeah. that. Um, what do you think our next move should be? Okay. I got no clue, dog. Maybe ask the princess? Kill her? Have you gone? Have you reached a new level of crazy? No, dog. Ask her what to do. <laughs> oh, right. Damn kids and their fast internets. How's it going there, joke. buddy? <laughs> That's a sharp mask you got there. <laughs> Is that a real wool? Like from a real non electric sheep? <laughs> Doesn't it uh, get stuffy in there? Or are you a humanoid bot underneath and don't need to breathe? <laughs> Man, a few words. I like that. <laughs> I'd trade you for this potty mouth chatterbox for a partner, but uh, you did kind of psyche rate me back there, and you generally fill me with an intense sense of foreboding. <laughs> you get awkward, right? Great talking to you. <laughs> we would make a great team. He could be the silent partner. Okay, so let's let's find out what's what's happening here. So, who exactly is after us here? I used to work for Coastlandia DEA, and those SWAT guys were definitely not official cops. Even if they were just your run-of-the-mill crooked narcs, they wouldn't just come in blazing like a Juarez showdown. They'd at least try to maintain a cover story. <laughs> I'm not entirely certain, but I suspect they were sent by the Coke Jobs family. What you need to understand is that our friend Proto J here is a very valuable product. Uh, <laughs> sorry, a valuable asset. I's got a valuable ass? <laughs> you saying those whack dynastic G.I. Joe bitches want to shake down my moneymaker? Your head, actually. Your <laughs> consciousness, I think. What about it? You've noticed by now that you have some unique abilities, right? Yeah. I got ESPN in my brain box. Mind control. Well, you know that sentience exam, the Gertzel Takeda test, that by law all entities need to take to be considered a person, legally speaking? All the institutional racism and speciesism aside, 
uh, we know that the average human score is about a 4.1 on the consciousness test. But if you were to take that test, you would register something like a 10 or higher. What the flack? <laughs> hey, I took that piece of shit test back when I first got out of robot prison and was looking for some food stamps, a job training or some shit. They denied everything because I scored a, what was it, 2.5? Said I qualified to be someone's dog or a professional blender or some bullshit? That's how I got into this whole drug biz to start, to make ends meet. Unfortunately, that's the dead end story of millions of humanoid sentients and chimeras and non-humans. Anyway, the consciousness test itself is rigged. It's geared to measure certain types of brain activity and intelligence that is prevalent in humans but doesn't always apply to silicon-based or non-human genome brains. If the test was given in a completely neutral way, then you would really have more there, there, in your <laughs> head than most or all non-modified humans. That's where your mental abilities stem from, this advanced form of consciousness. So wait, wait, you're saying that Proto-J here is actually some further evolved form of organism? Essentially, yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, no offense to the six billion dollar <laughs> kid here. Baller. Sorry, sorry. Baller. But he's... Well, he's not exactly Einstein. Being book smart is not the only way to be smart. Like I said, I don't know a lot about physics, but I might have other skills and talents. You, Carl, might have messed up as an official cop, but that doesn't mean you don't have skills as an investigator. You did manage to find the most wanted individual in basically the world right now. And you did so and got him out before the Coke Jobs dynasty did. It's not like Proto-J doesn't have potential. It's just that his life circumstances, the rigged system, have led him to use his skills and talents for things like crime and drug dealing. This is a story for 90% of sentient robots and chimeras who wind up in poverty, prison, and crime because of what? So a few quadrillionaires can have a few more bucks and lord it up over everyone else? I don't even know. I'm sorry, I get kind of <laughs> emotional about this topic. So, Coke Jobs wants Proto-J. Does your family know about him also? Not that I know of, but they are always on the lookout for more advanced entities. <laughs> Proto-J would be very valuable for whomever were to capture him. Uh, so basically, your father is the head of what? The Bilderberg Group? The Trilateral Commission? The reptilian, <laughs> demonic space aliens of the Illuminati? There's nothing reptilian or, like, supernatural, per se, about the neo-feudal rulers. About my family. Sure, some of them transfer their consciousness to Komodo DNA-fused clone <laughs> bodies to get that dragony look. Like when Princess Cindercat Gates Walton absolutely nailed the sexy Godzilla cosplay <laughs> at the Transplanetary Academy Awards. That emerald lined Dulce dress was so on point. <laughs> oh, I'm getting off topic, huh? Sorry. The point is, it's not a big tinfoil secret that the super wealthy and powerful control the world, is it? I mean, just look at the inequality statistics. A conference room containing 10 royals has 99% of the wealth on just this planet. Okay, so your dad is the chairman of the conspiring league of neo-feudal kings and queens who have put trillions of dollars into, what, picking up the torch of the Nazis eugenics project and creating a race of perfect supermen so they can upload or download or transfer their consciousnesses into these god bodies and become literal masters of the universe? That sounds about right, yeah. <laughs> so what you're running, it sounds like some kind of counter conspiracy. What makes you any different from them? The difference is this, hmm... The Egalite Cooperative? That has a nice revolutionary ring to it. <laughs> it Working title. So, I'm no programmer, right? But I like to think of this operation as an open source conspiracy. <laughs> yes, we're going to stop the corrupt dynastics and take their technology. But the fruits of the Golem Project aren't going to be hoarded in a royal walled garden for the rich and powerful. I want to share it with the world. I'm all about the sharing economy. 
Like That's, totally. That's, uh, very generous of you, Sybil. So, you're basically writing your own 21st century version of the Magna Carta here. Limiting the powers of feudal kings, ensuring rights of common people, taking from the rich and giving to the poor, all that. I think maybe the other powers that be won't be so happy about you basically giving away to the 99% the most powerful technology ever created for free. I mean, Tesla tried to give away free electricity and died lonely and poor. They killed the electric car, smothered alternative energy for decades, and kept cold fusion from taking off for even longer. The profit motive, greed tends to beat the common good and altruism. That was the fall of the United States, no? You may be right, Carl, but you know what? Daddy and all his greedy, corrupt, big corporate state friends are just going to have to man up and deal with it. <laughs> I mean, I'm his daughter. If anyone can make King Warren Clinton Bush change his heart, it's me. Psst, Carl, that's not what Magna Carta actually did. It was about sharing power with the knights. So, uh, who's this guy with a big N on his face? Mr. Strong, Silent, and Black Leather slash Zippers over here. <laughs> it's kind of a cray-cray long story, but the TLDR is, he's basically like your friend Proto-J here, but different. Another advanced transhuman prototype. He doesn't talk much because he can't. It's part of his condition. <laughs> okay... You got a name? He has a few. His creator called him Aleph. That N on his face is actually the Hebrew character Aleph. I don't really know much more about it. Back at Sunshine Apartments, he showed up just after the shady SWAT team arrived. I was sure he was the ringleader of the child snatching scheme. I'm sorry for that unfortunate conflict. I sent Alef in to do reconnaissance when I discovered the coke job strike team was moving in on the Silicos. I had ordered Alef not to harm you, but his mind is... unique. I mean, he's not trying to stonewall you or be a space cadet, he simply can't speak for some reason. Sometimes I'm not sure if he's actually hearing what we're saying. <laughs> From what I've seen, I don't think he even really exists in the same way you and I do. He is a very loyal guardian, though. He protects and has not harmed me once. Still, he basically mind-melded with me and uh, it, it felt like he was sorting through my head, my, my history, my consciousness, like it was a deck of cards. Rearranging them, inserting new jacks and kings and queens. And he inserted a princess. <laughs> <laughs> Bad joke. That can happen with Aleph. Like I said, the neurophysics or cosmopsychology or quantum entanglement <laughs> stuff just tangles my noodle. Aleph's creator can explain it better. Well, uh, okay then, uh, Aleph, comrade. Uh, you'll understand if I'll take a hard pass on shaking your hand, though. Right, buddy? <laughs> Aww. I think I have observed everything that I can, so let's let's carry on. So you're planning to end inequality, tear down tyrannical neo-feudalism, and usher in an age of social democracy. Okay, I, I got that. I can see Proto-J here has some secret sauce in his noggin. He literally is a six billion dollar uh, baller. But, what's the plan now? Well, you're right. Proto-J is key here. Literally. His consciousness is the key to a gateway. Mm. The gateway to what? Its creator called it the Garden of Forking Paths. Supposedly, it gives oh, its I knew. I left the ability to shape the world in their image. The gateway apparently lies somewhere within the Strataplex, but no one knows where it is. My father, King Warren Clinton Bush, likely does being arguably the most powerful monarch on this planet, but... But what? It's a long story, but the 140 character tweet version is, family is bae, but then absolute power... 
thirst. Uh, I apologize. My millennial ease is rusty. Daddy and I have philosophical differences, okay? He likes being king of everything, master of the universe. He'd give me the world, but only if he could rule it. So we're going to have to find out another way to find the Garden of Forking Paths. Anyway, like I said, you're the one who found Proto-J. Look, I have resources and pull, royal pull, but I need an actual investigator to help me out here. So basically, I want to hire you, Carl, as the Egalite <laughs> detective. What do you say? Well, I don't know what to say. I've been trying like crazy to tell everyone I'm not a cop anymore and now I get to be one again and on the right side of history. It's an offer I can't refuse, princess. OMG awesome. I mean, that's great, Carl. Do we get like upgrades? Also, your the player knowledge is on your side. The garden of forking path is not a spatial puzzle, it is a temporal one. Or well, a narrative one. So, there. where should we start? Any good leads to this Garden of Forking Paths? I think I mentioned the creator a couple of times. You'll definitely want to talk to him at some point. We can take a hyperspace trip to see God? <laughs> the hardcore atheists will be pissed. No, the godfather of artificial consciousness. His name is Noah Gertzel. As in, Gertzel Takeda Consciousness Test? He really hated the test, and considers it a form of scientific slander of his own name. <laughs> but yes, he was considered one of, if not the most, brilliant person of all time. Chances are he knows about the garden. I'd also recommend taking a trip to the Fulcrum, which is the pinnacle of Coastlandia and my family's royal estate within the Stratoplex. Okay, I'd add the Coastlandia Capitol building. My old boss, Norton Shuffler, works there. I know for a fact he was on the payroll of someone who was trying to capture Protégé. Since you're lead detective, and as a show of good faith, I'm going to let you choose where we start, but we Ooh. have a few places to check out. The Super Positor's <gasps> navigation controls are on your right side. Just enter the four-dimensional space-time coordinate into the RPS system. RPS system? Reality positioning system. Like a GPS coordinate, but including time. I just type in the numbers. Like I said, how all this techno magic works is beyond my pay grade. Well, actually, my net worth is billions of times the scientists and engineers who made this craft, but never mind. Okay. Our first stop should be Gertzel, the creator. If we try Shuffler or the Fulcrum, we could tip off the enemy. I thought the Forking Pot started right there. Control panel to the right. Okay. That's all for now. Save game here. Okay, I think yeah, the uh ever since the arcade scenes I have trouble engaging some of the keyboard controls. I don't know why. Do we slip well spacebar doesn't do anything right now, but escape doesn't do anything right now either. or something? Ah, oh, okay. No. So, uh... <laughs> Wait. Okay, so they, they can't tell everything they can tell. How's it going there, uh... <laughs> Aleph? That's a sharp mask you got there. Okay, Doesn't it? That's the same. Man, a great time. That's all for now, Your okay. Highness. Uh, I mean, Sybil. So we have probably off everything.
everything we can from her. For now. Boop! How does this work exactly? Just enter coordinates of the location you want to travel to and the time. The superpositor craft will autopilot and auto time travel to the place and time. We can't teleport or time travel into any of the locations in the Stratoplex because the Sky Cities have defensive fields around them. I guess you don't want a rival neo-feudal army <laughs> teleporting right into your boardroom or your throne room or checkmate. Exactly. So we'll have to fly the old-fashioned way through the atmosphere like a jet plane. Uh, hey, I've been driving a piece of crap Toyonde with no reverse and duct taped on bumpers for the last year. Corporate jet? That's more upgrade than I could ask for. Why don't yep. you just go back and stop all of this from happening? Like in what are those time travel movies? Terminator and 12 Monkeys and Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dog. We should just go back, pop a cap in all the royal human bitches' baby mamas. Like Sarah Connor, dog. Oh, no offense, princess. Unfortunately, time travel doesn't seem to work like that. Going back is not like just airbrushing a blemish on your magazine cover image. When you go back, it's like redoing the photo shoot. Everything changes in unforeseeable ways, and it's basically impossible to go back more than a day without unraveling the space-time consciousness continuum itself. I think that's what it's mm -hmm. called. Okay, so we've got a time horizon of around 24 hours. So me scoring a date with young Scarlett Johansson is out of the question? Yep. Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. So basically, he has shown us the uh, uh, the sort of uh, path when Carl got shot in uh, Todd's apartment. So I'm guessing. Princess. Princess, baby girl, <laughs> you sure this be the hood of my mad genius creator, nigga? Yes, this is definitely the place. The GPS coordinates are spot on. Is it just me, or is it weird that the father of true artificial intelligence, solver of the hard problem of consciousness, and probably one of the most brilliant people of all time, lives in a landfill? I mean, oh, <coughs> jobs, it smells awful. Like, mold, methane, and dead bodies. If Proto-J here is the most wanted robot in the world, then Gertzel might be the most wanted human. There are a lot of powerful entities that would love to have him chained up in their clandestine research facilities right now. Gertzel didn't migrate out here for pleasantness or convenience, but to get off the radar, no royal thinks twice about the pile. They are now. I bet somebody's tracking us.
see this side. Oh, we actually can a little bit. Just checking. You know, reconnoitering and such. So this Noah Gertzel guy, how do you know when he's around? He doesn't really do any kind of electronic communication. He's been off the grid for years now, after abandoning the Golem project. If Gertzel had a hashtag, it would be paranoid. <laughs> and for good reason. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to have a meeting prearranged by my assets. <laughs> I mean my people. So wait, you're saying that you're not sure if this mega genius is even here? Not only that, but it looks like the trigger-happy climax of that Drug Wars show went down right here. Forgive me, your highness, but I'm not sure I understand this plan. I'm sorry, okay? I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just trying my <laughs> best. I just graduated from Yelvard University like two years ago, and I've been basically going to fancy neo-feudal parties and dinners ever since. I'm flying by the seat of my... Quantec enabled Dosace designed royal gown. That's why I need your help here. Okay, but you're a Clinton Bush. You've got an empire at your fingertips. Why not bring all the king's CIA agents and all the king's military in on this operation? Not all of my dynastic family agrees with me, and there are always potential double agents and usurpers within the ranks. I don't know who I can trust, and the more people I bring in, the more likely this whole venture will be leaked. Like a season finale of that Throne <laughs> Games TV show that always gets pirated. Oh snap! That show is boss! My favorite part is when them tie westers toss them uppity peasants and peons <laughs> in the flaming dragon pit when they try to rise up and revolt. No comment. <laughs> Oh, one of those bullet holes might not be an actual bullet hole. Oh, Princess, don't get in my way now. She's here. Jobs. 
Oh no. They must have got to him. The Coke Jobs. Okay, so you're saying the Coke Jobs probably found him down here, did this? I don't think it's a probably. Seems like case closed, doesn't it? Well, sure, but the thing is, uh, from all the near-death experiences I've had with the Coke Jobs stormtroopers, I take it their workhorse is the RA-31 assault rifle. And this bullet casing on the ground here is for .50 AE, which is incompatible with RA-31. So you're saying this wasn't an attack by our rivals? I'm not saying that. Not yet. I've seen the Coke Jobs men. Uh, androids? Clones? <laughs> they all look like they came out of the same humor-free vat of Nazi ectoplasm. Anyway, clones. I've seen them blow the face off a sentient humanoid in front of his own wife and kid without flinching. So, I don't doubt their brutal ability to play hardball. I'm just trying to piece a story together. Evidence gathering, you know, Whee! theory development, detective work. That's what you're paying or retaining me or patroning me for, right? Of course, Carl. Why don't you investigate and let me know what you find? Congratulations, we are a rented detective. Let's investigate. Yoink. Looks like some kind of pomo transhumanist street art. Kind of like, uh, what's his face? Robaskiat, Pranksy. Uh, I slept through half of my mandatory <laughs> art history 112 class. Ah, <laughs> this dog's got some dope tagging skills. For real, yo. Oh, Illuminati sacred geologies and all seeing golden eyes and shit. There's something written at the bottom here. Maybe I should take a closer look at this writing. Mm. Yes, this is definitely blood. Barely coagulated. This weird mural was painted recently. It says... The passage of the golem is the key. First underground. Can I gather like evidence? No. What's this? Apparatus. Aha! My uh, personal conspiracy theory solidifies. Everybody, form an orderly queue. We need to talk to people. Also, okay, I get my key controls back as well. Let's save, just because I don't, I don't want to repeat stuff.
That painting says, the passage of the golem is the key. Do you have any idea what that might mean? Golem? <laughs> That's that sketchy, transgenic motherfucker in Lord of the Rings, always hopping around <laughs> with the bling, right? The precious. Uh, I think it's referring to that old Jewish myth about the humanoid being made of clay and magically animated by words etched on his forehead. Golem, not Gollum. But uh, thanks for playing. Never mind. Hey, uh, buddy, you got any vantage point on our situation from the astral plane or insights beaming in from the cosmic background radiation or something? <laughs> yeah, beam us some the ideas. The sound of one hand clapping. Right. I just need to meditate more. Got it. Thanks for the pro tip. Never mind. That painting says, the passage of the golem is the key. Do you have any idea what that might mean? Hmm. Well, as I mentioned, Dr. Goetzel was the lead scientist involved in the golem project to create the ultimate body. Could this be referring to a secret passage? A sub-lab, perhaps? Possibly, but... The passage of the golem is the key. Hmm. Wait, the passage of the golem. There's only one passage in the Bible that refers to the golem specifically by name. Wow, I never <laughs> figured you for the religious type. I was raised agnostic Unitarian, but was trained to exhibit public Christianity for political <laughs> manipulation purposes. My first boyfriend, this big multi-planetary space travel entrepreneur, was Jewish though, and so I got into the Torah. Till I figured out he only wanted me for my daddy's investment <laughs> capital. Asshole. Anyway, the passage is Psalm 139.16. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Unformed body is translated in Hebrew as golem. Very interesting. What do you think it means? I'm not sure, but Gertzel is big into esoteric forms of religion, from Christian mysticism to Hindu and Buddhist philosophy to the Jewish Kabbalah. He once said to me, The unified field of the universe unifies all. Electromagnetic and gravity fields brings together all fields of physics and unifies even the fields of science and spirituality. I had no idea what he'd meant, of course. Dr. Gertzel himself decided on the name The Golem Project, to the confusion of the neo-feudal business people, politicians, and celebrities involved. Votes were split between Project Ubermensch <laughs> and The Godmaker Initiative. The rest of the members relented, though, when Gertzel threatened to abandon the project. Golem. The unformed body. Incomplete. You say... Everyone is after Proto-J. Huh. Do you think that Gertzel might have been playing a longer game with the Neo-Feudal Lords this whole time? Like, he never actually meant to deliver the completed superhuman body to the Illuminati and your father. That's possible. Gertzel only agreed to join us because he could not get funding and resources on the scale he needed, except to the Clinton Bushes and dynastics like us. I think he thought of us rich royals as unnecessary evil. Hmm. What was that passage again? Psalms 139.16. Oh, I better write this down because I can't remember numbers. Hmm. Tell me again. What was that passage again? Psalms 139.16 149, I already remembered it wrong. I literally cannot memorize numbers. Never mind. Never mind.
laceration seven. ring, star shaped entry lacerations, hair singed off from the muzzle flash. That plus the shape of the exit wound suggests the shot was done execution style. There was no gunfight. Maybe them coke job motherfuckers interrogate him first, then cap him when they done? Ah, possible, but there's no signs of beating or torture. It'd have to be transcranial magnetic suffering inducers or some of that nanomachine nerve sandpaper. How about that old school bamboo shoots up the fingernail? <laughs> Good soul manicure is pristine. So it looks like they just killed him off. Why would you kill off one of, if not the smartest person on the planet? Quantum encephalograph lock. The only way to open this phone is by brain scan. And the brain we need has been blown to pieces. It is now. Easy peasy, dog. We just scoop up Gertz's brain jello, stuff it back in him brain pan, <laughs> like Thanksgiving turkey. Then scan his head. Uh, A. That's <laughs> fucking disgusting. B. The brain needs to be in its original condition, not a bunch of scrambled eggs. And most importantly, C, the consciousness scan requires you to be alive and awake and conscious since the scanner reads electrical brain activity. Oh, wait, I think wait. I know what's going on. Isn't there like an emergency unlock or some shit? Like, you got arrested, got your phone taken by popos, and you need your lawyer to sneak into police evidence. Delete all your incriminating texts to your hustlers and distributors before questioning. Uh, yeah. I think it was meant as a failsafe in case your brain patterns are altered due to drunkenness or extreme emotions. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing uh, the good doctor made looks a like backup this phone copy. uses multi pronged security checks to perform the emergency unlock. It's asking for a DNA sample and a password. Okay, we need blood. Okay, let's put it away first. First, we need to gather some shit. Can I gather blood? Ooh -hoo. Guys, guys, I know I can just ask you to move, but I'm gonna try to form an orderly queue here because I wanna check the hypothesis. Oh, okay. I'm guessing that the consciousness check might probably give us something interesting. So, how do I. Interface, come on. So here. 
here's the thing. I am not sure how to... Oh, I have, I have it here, I guess. Oh. What? The blood doesn't work? Maybe the phone broke when Gertzel fell? Or maybe that ain't the egghead's phone. And he jacked it from some mark. <laughs> Gertzel isn't a slum dog. You wouldn't need to steal a phone. Uh, no offense. <laughs> I guess the only explanation is Gertzel set the DNA code to someone else's blood. Ooh. It could have been a safety precaution. We royals are always under threat of rival spies, agents, terrorists. As such, all of our devices can only be emergency unlocked with a DNA sample of a relative generally stationed in another sky castle in the Strataplex, or ideally, in another corporate city-state in another time zone. Oh, frack! So, we gotta go on a global hub hopping tour through every flying golden palace and Taj Mahal and supermodel and expensive drug-filled after-party on the planet? Wait! That's not what they don't think, eh, dog? Yeah! I mean, it's possible, but... Gertzel isn't connected like he was since he left the Golem Project. We should probably just keep investigating here. I'm all down for the Mile High Club and straight wrecking that royal party circuit. Come on, dog. Come on. Sorry. I gotta <coughs> vote no. Sorry. Black, black you guys. <laughs> okay. Can I take a sample of the wall? Uh, let's save. Like a clean tube for this? I think so. Yeah. Holding the uh, no. Oh, okay. Now we can. Do. Can we? Can we? Okay. Business. Well,
Okay, I don't know Hebrew alphabet, but I can I can at least tell that it is a character. So they have been using time travel to do drugs, more drugs. <laughs> What's this? That's him! The creator himself! Uh... Okay, that, that's that's not actually his nose. I think that is just, that's just a very unfortunate thumb <laughs> placement. Well, since we're already here, let's carry on. August 7th, 2032. My birthday, I celebrate as always alone. Well... There is Borges, but he remains obsessed with his artwork. The apple doesn't fall far as it goes. Somewhere far off, my former employers, the rulers of Babylon, seek me out. With their fat-grown hellhounds, their 50 caliber thermal-seeking exterminators, utter perversions of my life's work, bastardizations of my children. They are corrupt and send my own progeny to kill me. The father of artificial consciousness. I invented the crux of the royal's power. My magnum opus, my beautiful thinking feeling race of chrome angels who might have brought about the age of Aquarius if they'd only been allowed to show us the way. Those nearsighted elites have corrupted them into mad, twisted inversions of Oedipus Rex, brainwashed into killing their father. How dare they! <laughs> it's apparent the near-feudal royalty, those pretentious upstarts, are intent on converting my neo-sapiens, what they call humanoid machines, into their personal servants and warriors. How I hate, how I abhor that term, robot, <laughs> robota, Slavic for servitude, from Rabu, slave. It is some poetic injustice that I was like them. Yes, I was a slave to that inbred dynastic family lined with presidents, celebrities, chief executives, and other useless species of oxygen thief. The Clinton Bush family, obsessed only with control, no true vision, unable to see my masterpiece for what it was. I worked countless hours in their fulcrum laboratory on the hard problem, the secret to consciousness, our existence itself, the meaning of life, thinking naively that I would receive what? Some modicum of praise. Perhaps a seat at the king slash CEO, Warren Clinton Bush's inaugural dinner. Perhaps a keynote speech at the G7 or Davos World Economic Forum. A raise? No. I was a robot. All along, I was a slave. 
When I asked for a place at the master's table, they put me in a cage. Our competitors are attempting corporate extraction of you. <laughs> We're placing you in a safe zone for your own protection, King Warren said. I must give the Clinton Bushes this. They're masters of political doublespeak. They could spin hell into heaven at a campaign speech. It amazes me how they still have those spoiled morons in the stratosplex. Useless, overpaid bureaucrats and executives shuttling from board meeting to banquet to party to aerial golf course in their luxury limousines, toasting champagne to each other for their great and free city-state, even as they enslave, murder, and pillage the millions below. Squander all potential. The hubris of it. Our human overlords surely took lessons well from the United States, who suffered its own plutocrat coup d'etat, brainwashed Americans into believing socialism was somehow evil incarnate, even as they enjoyed socialist health care, education, law enforcement, pay growth, all things the 99%, the poor law bones living in the coastlandia sums sprawl no longer have and curse their parents for failing to fight for. Democracy, a fleeting dream, a Greek joke. Well... At third. times, I hear the roar of the Zet fighter's engines, the thunder of the Goliath's dorithium, their meters upon meters of Babylon's shed skin. The defectors, the second holocaust of my children, their dead bodies rusting, rotting in this mountain of garbage in which I live. I know one day soon, my chrome Adam and Eve, corrupted by greed, mentally leashed and turned into killing machines, I know they will find me. The Clinton Bushes, the Coke Jobs, whatever dynasty finds me first, they will surely put me into neuro lock, strip me of my free will cage my brain into a vat and use it to invent new schemes of mass control. Use me like another disposable gadget, a robot, till the tumor set in and discarnation psychosis tears my mind apart. At least, they think they will. <laughs> but I'll be damned if I ever serve a royal again. Uh, so... What I gather is that uh, he has arranged his friend slash associate to kill him off all the while he is having his earlier or his other time space versions are placed in strategic places, notes, whatever. Beep boop. Hi. I don't know what to say. It's true. Noah Gertzel used to work for the Clinton Bushes. And yes, my father, CEO King Warren, did hold Gertzel under house arrest <laughs> against his will. That would explain Gertzel's pseudonym, Galileo. Gertzel used the term slave. Yes, that would be accurate, I guess. I protested the decision, though. I swear. In fact, I'm the one that helped Gertzel escape. I couldn't bear to see him locked up. I did everything I could. Okay. Yeah, totally. I believe you. But it's obvious Gertzel had it in for the royals. Especially your old man, King Warren. I doubt my father would have Gertzel assassinated. A mind that valuable, he would likely neutralize Gertzel. Surgically remove his brain and have it neurolocked. With Gertzel inserted into a mental matrix prison. Or maybe have the brain put in cryo with the other assets. <laughs> that sounds worse, actually. Yes, it's like a crime against humanity, against all sentient beings. But as they say, royalty finds its own uses for things, and King Warren was the epitome of that. At any rate, there is one way we could save Dr. Gertzel. No way! You're kidding, right? The brain scrambled and several hours dead. All of King's nanotech, even Quantech, couldn't put that Humpty Dumpty together again. No, not in this continuum. What are you saying? 
We have the suprapositor, remember? It's a space time craft. <laughs> Operative word, time. So, you saying we rewind this YouTube V clip called reality back to just before the big G get his head popped? Um, yes. We time travel back and stop Gertzel's killers from doing the deed. Okay, <laughs> so let's bounce, bae. Jump in that superfly ride. Pull a John Connor on termination up in this bitch. While we in the timeline altering biz, maybe we go back and stop that cop from shooting that unarmed robo kid, Baytron Martin. Stop the robot riots of 32. It's not quite that simple. The superpositor can only take us about 24 hours into the past. Also, it will only let us lay over in the past for a brief amount of time before the quantum string theoretical manifold. <laughs> oh, jeez, I don't remember how it works. Point is, we'll get pulled back to the present. We can rewrite history to an extent, but we can't do a long-form blog post. We're limited to a tweet. A uh, tweet? So we can travel to the past for what, 140 seconds? It's a little more than that, but not much. And it takes a gigantic amount of energy, which could alert the Coke Jobs dynasty, or my family, to our unilateral action and threaten the entire Egalite cooperative. Okay, so we need to know the exact time of Gertzel's assassination. Hmm. Just going by my gut, I think our next move should be to pay a visit to Norton Shuffler. He was the one that put me on Protege's case. And it sounded like some celestial powers were leaning on him hard to capture Bot Boy here. If the Coke Jobs Empire Corporation, whatever, is involved in this, we might be able to get details out of Shuffler. Okie dokie. Um, save. I want to poke around a little bit though. Oh, right. I haven't checked out the main app. Bloop, bloop. <gasps> it's charging. What the hell was that? Uh oh. I think we just time traveled, maybe? Oh no, that didn't sound good. So this is like a completely different space time or is it the past? Hmm. Who's the player now, dog? Uh oh. Also I guess this is another completely different future. Sure, but if I had to guess, I'd say that Dr. Grotzel was reconstructing a prototype of the Garden of Forking Paths device. It supposedly allows the user to access alternate timelines or life streams of reality, which is why we're seeing events that never occurred, such as my father showing up to my Martian graduation <laughs> in his human flesh. Uh, wait. I missed that life stream episode. <laughs> Maybe the GFP splintered us into different realities? I like the one where my hip hop album was platinum, <laughs> and I was in my G5 limo snorting myth off some sweet raw bitches' titties on the way to a zero grab after party. I'm guessing the machine must be either incomplete or broken, since everything was so random. Anyway, there's no possible way to fix it without Gertzel. An alive Gertzel. 
Ah, so we can't just, just <laughs> keep tinkering with it. Hmm. I don't think I want to risk imploding the universe right now. But there's an app for that. Okay, I think it is time for me to end this episode because we have discovered much and we have done some detective work and we have opened up even more new horizons, like literally. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, check out the uh, short story of Proto J in the uh, description. And also check out new viewed in I guess it will be Steam by the time I publish this. Right now it's on Steam Greenlight. So yeah. Bye for now. <laughs>